from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering PagerDuty Summit 2019. Brought to you by PagerDuty. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in San Francisco at the Western St. Francis Historical Hotel. It's our third year coming to PagerDuty Summit. I think it's the fourth year of the show. Jennifer Tejada just finished the keynote. You can see this place is packed with people, packed with energy. We're excited to be back and have our first guest of the day. He's Josh Cade, the Chief Evangelist at Turwell. Josh, great to see you. Great to see you, thanks for having me today. Absolutely, so have you been to a PagerDuty Summit before? This is actually my first event with PagerDuty. What do you think? Five uh, to pretty, five, huh? Yeah, I mean, they've really grown. I mean, PagerDuty's been a partner of ours for a while, but they have grown so much so rapidly, and I, I think, you know, after the IPO especially, you know, they've, they've really grown pretty crazy. Yeah, a lot of gasoline on the fire with the IPO. Exactly, exactly. All right, so let's jump into it. So Churwell, for people who aren't familiar with Churwell, what are you guys all about? So Churwell Software is a company that we specialize in IT service management and enterprise service management. So we recognize that the world of what we used to know as like help desk management and whatnot has grown. You know, digital transformation means that more people are involved in more revenue-bearing activities across the company. And just like PagerDuty recognizes, you're always on. You've got to keep doing all of these things across the company. And so what we do is we act as a system of record to move requests, to move orchestration across an organization, across all teams. So it's not just an IT focus. And we build a platform, basically, to enable the building out of all of your processes, automation, orchestration, uh, et cetera. We focus in ITSM because the IT group is, is the best entry point for this kind of uh, functionality inside of an organization because they have the best broad kind of horizontal view across all departments. Um, but again, we've got customers that use it in uh, pretty much any kind of way from running public housing development to all kinds of just uses that we never even imagined. Right. Okay, so the, I think what's confusing to people, certainly the layman, certainly me, uh -huh. is you know there's kind of all these competing system of records that appears from the outside. And, we know ITSM space, we've covered it for a long time. You know, you need to have a single system of record to know yep. what the answer is, and yet, you know, PagerDuty announces all these integrations with all these systems like Churwell. How do those systems work together to still maintain kind of system of record integrity and yet leverage the capabilities of the different platforms? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting thing because we're seeing so much convergence in the industry, and we're seeing that, you know, pretty much all of our software has to talk to all of our software, right? And so, what we're seeing a lot is system of record doesn't necessarily mean the same thing that it used to. You may have a system of record for your customer data, you may have a system of record for your financial data, you may have a system of record for your request management and workflow data, and the key is really making those things talk to each other. And so, you know, between the, you know, the cloud and all of the growth that we've had there and, and the way that software just works, it's really about being able to handshake and talk to other companies' software. Okay. Um, and, you know, so it's also about companies, one of the problems that happens in a lot of companies is you choose too many systems of record. And you know, so you've got this team that all has different data. So I think that's part of what we'll see the kind of the future battle of the next few years is either we all got to talk together or somebody has to you know, become more prevalent and, right. and become a bigger system of record, if you get what I mean. So what are some of the use cases where the two systems PagerDuty system and the Churwell system would interact around a particular type of customer interaction. Yep, so there's a couple different entry points, but uh, one of them is, so let's say a customer has a request. So it's not even an incident, for example. So they have a request, and you've got SLAs where you've got to fulfill a request very quickly. Um, you know, Sharewell's great at getting that request, interacting with the customer, making sure that they know, you know what to expect and whatnot. PagerDuty's great at getting the team together and getting people together to fulfill those things. And so there's that kind of transition point where that request goes to PagerDuty and PagerDuty gets to bring the team together, work on fulfilling that thing, and get back to the customer, hey, your thing has been fulfilled. Okay. So another one that happens at a great use case is, you know, we have a lot of links to different event monitoring, you know, just like PagerDuty does. But a lot of times those things will come to our system and turn into uh, incidents, you know, in our system. So we're able to send that data over to PagerDuty and basically whip up the team and get things moving so that we can resolve that event. And we have an upcoming integration to basically share that back and forth. I believe we're actually officially announcing it next week at our conference in Nashville. Um, but so we have an upcoming integration so that we'll be pushing stuff to directional and getting things from PagerDuty and pushing things back into okay, PagerDuty. That's a great example. That's a great 
uh, example because what you're basically doing is breaking the problem down into the pieces that each of the different software takes yep. care of. And PagerDuty is really good at figuring out kind of who the team needs to be, pulling together the teams, and having a relatively low impact uh, task group to come and, and fix that yep. that uh, resolution. Well, and you know, while being a system of record for request management and, and workflow and whatnot, you know, one of the things that we see in the industry is so many of the customers want best of breed. They don't necessarily want one piece of software to come in and try to be everything, because nobody can be everything, right? And so that key of let's, you know, PagerDuty does what they're really good at, we do what we're really good at. Um, our customers really like that, and so right. that's how we partner with other companies. Okay, so later today, I think you're giving a session on low code. Yep. Um, what is low code? I mean, I, I have an opinion, but sure, would you guys think it's low code? Why is low code so important? So low code is really important for a few reasons, but the first is really, I would say, time to value. So when you have to spin up a development team and spend a lot of time to build everything that you want to do in your organization, just a simple business process, that can take a lot of time and expense. So the ShareWell platform is built in a low code way. Most of the things that you can do in our software, you do through drag and drop interfaces. And a lot of times we'll have people a little skeptical you know, when they first encounter us. No, we need to write JavaScript or we need to write some language. And we bring them into the system and they find, no, not only do not have to, but you can accomplish what you needed to before you got done planning what code you were going to go write. You know, forget testing and all that kind of stuff. So most of what you can do in ShareWell is actually no code. But we call it low code because when it comes to integrating, Oftentimes, you need to speak to other APIs. You know, not every piece of software out there is, right. is no code. So, talking to REST APIs, talking to other APIs, you know, integrating things together, that's where a little bit of code comes in. But we also have, you know, basically drag and drop interfaces for even integrating to other things. We have uh, something in tune of 80 partnerships right now, uh, partners that we integrate with, and that number is growing all the time. Okay. So is the main benefit of low code just the existing developers being able to move faster? Or what we're, we're hearing a lot of conversation about is really kind of democratization and letting people that, 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 that maybe can't code uh -huh. and, uh, and are not qualified to do that last integration step, but, but to start to build Absolutely. workflows and processes without having to figure out if I'm doing it in Java or Perl or whatever. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely <laughs> both of those things. I mean, you know, so, you know, the, the time to value aspect is important for those devs, but often, you know, companies can be utilizing those resources in a much more fruitful manner. And so if you allow the service owners or business analysts to be able to go in and actually affect those processes, just like you're saying, that democratization really helps speed up a business. Right. So in terms of engines of, for your guys' growth, you know, there's a bunch of them that are talked about all the time. There's DevOps. Um, which, which is clearly the, the right bet to make 10 uh -huh. years ago. <laughs> yeah. There's cloud, which has worked out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. um, and then this whole thing, the digital transformation that everyone is, 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 uh, is trying to get done. Yep. You know, which of those three do you think are most important? How do you see those kind of playing out in your business? So, you know, I think all three are, are very important. I think digital transformation, though, is, you know, if you don't transform your business and take advantage of digital transformation right now, you're like an amoeba in the primordial goo, watching those first fish walk on land and laughing, ah, that's just a trend. You know, I think all businesses need to transform themselves and take advantage of the digital technologies that they can get a hold of. So I think for us, you know, being an accelerator for that, being a way that you can bring inputs and outputs into a singular platform and basically, you know, speed up that ability to transform and make it more predictable, uh, utilizing governance and auditability and all those things that don't generally happen in a DevOps or a transformation environment. Right. That's really our key, and that's I think where we're going to see the industry. You know, everybody has to transform to stay competitive, and so we're focused on that digital yeah. transformation. Trying to distract the gin just walked by. The star yep. of the show is, Absolutely. Uh, is making the Absolutely. rounds. Absolutely. All right, Josh. Well, thanks for for taking a few minutes. Good luck on your talk. No and, problem. Uh, good luck at your event uh, in Nashville. Awesome, thank you so much. Thanks right. for having me. He's Josh, I'm Jeff, and you're watching theCUBE, where it's PagerDuty Summit at the historic Western State Branch. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.